the previous lecture we were discussing about <coughs> flow uh, and heat transfer over a flat plate now today we will be discussing about internal flows so when we will be discussing about internal flows we will briefly discuss about uh, the important fluid mechanics issues and then of course we will give some more time on heat transfer issues with internal flows so first we will try to understand what basically happens with internal flows so we are now studying internal force convection So let us for simplicity consider something which we call as parallel plate channel. <coughs> so what is a parallel plate channel? Parallel plate channel is essentially two parallel plates where the width of the plate is like infinitely large as compared to its other dimensions. So if you have a channel like this, so this dimension let us call it B. let us call this as 2H, so B is much much greater than 2H, so that it is basically a flow taking place in the XY plane. The Z direction being infinitely large it means that the gradient in the z direction is much much negligible as compared to the gradients in the x and y direction. Now this is a simplified paradigm, but it gives a very important physical insight. Now <coughs> in reality, in even for rectangular channels, if the width of the rectangular channel is much larger than the height, we can consider it like a parallel plate channel, although it is not physically two parallel plates but in effect if the width is much larger than the height then it is like a parallel plate channel. So uh, we will discuss about parallel plate channels and circular tubes or circular pipes which are of importance in engineering and uh, although the mathematics involved with the circular pipes will be different from that of a parallel plate channel uh, simply because of the change of <coughs> coordinate system from Cartesian to the cylindrical polar coordinate system, but uh, essentially the concept the physics is <coughs> almost the same. So we will try to understand that carefully, so first we will consider the hydrodynamics. Let us say that fluid enters this channel with a velocity u infinity and temperature t infinity, but I am not writing the temperature issue here because here we are discussing only the hydrodynamics first. So just in as in case of flow over a single flat plate, for flow over flow within a parallel plate channel, essentially it is like flow confined between two individual plates. So the boundary layers will develop on individual flat plates. So the boundary layers are developing like this and because of symmetry with respect to the center line the boundary layers will meet somewhere on the center line of the channel. Now uh, let us try to figure out the velocity distribution in the let us say two sections 1 and 2.
So you we can see that within the boundary layer the velocity profile will be there. Then the velocity will be uniform. So the region where the velocity is uniform this is called as the core region outside the boundary layer core region. Now if you try to draw the velocity profile in section 2 what will happen? Now let us say in the core region at section 1 the velocity is uc1. Now my question is that in the core region of section 2 if the velocity is uc2 is uc2 equal to uc1 is it greater than uc1 or is it less than uc1. So let us assume uh, that it is a constant density flow. So what remains constant between the sections 1 and 2 is the volume flow rate. The mass flow rate is constant, but if rho is constant that is equivalent to volume flow rate is constant. How do you get the volume flow rate? You get the volume flow rate by integrating the velocity profile. You get the volume flow rate by integrating the velocity profile. So integral of the velocity profile here must be same as the integral of the velocity profile here. Now here there is a greater region over which the fluid is slowed down. Here the fluid is slowed down only over this distance. Here the fluid is slowed down over a greater distance. So if when the fluid is slowed down by a greater distance what will happen? To compensate for this slowing down the core velocity uc2 must be greater than uc1 to make up for this slowing down over a larger distance right. So one important thing we can follow is that one very key difference between internal and external flow is in external flow there is a u infinity which is a constant here there is no constant u infinity there is a center line velocity or the core velocity the core velocity is continuously changing with x. So you see is a function of x all right. So it is not like u infinity which is a constant. Now let us try to schematically draw <coughs> uc versus x p versus x and tau wall versus x So uc versus x we have seen that the flow velocity increases the, the core velocity increases as you are moving along x but to what extent how long there is a situation when the boundary layers merge after the boundary layers merge if you want to get the velocity profile. the velocity profile becomes something like this. This velocity profile is called as fully developed velocity profile. Because we are going to discuss about two different boundary layers thermal and hydrodynamic this is more uh, uh, specifically characterized as hydrodynamically fully developed flow. So 
so when the flow hydrodynamic becomes hydrodynamically fully developed i mean it may appear that just when the boundary layers merge it becomes like that but in practice it takes a little bit of distance from there to become hydrodynamically fully developed but at least for the undergraduate level without going into that complexity we will assume that when after the boundary layers are merged the flow has become hydrodynamically fully developed so what is the big essence of hydrodynamically fully developed flow so here in the core region what happens the effect of the presence of the wall is not propagated the effect of the presence of the wall is propagated only up to this distance but when you come to hydrodynamic fully developed flow the entire fluid feels the effect of the wall okay and because the entire fluid feels now feels the effect of the wall the velocity profile from now onwards doesn't change any more with x so hydrodynamically fully developed you see is not equal to uh, uc is a function of x till the flow is hydrodynamically fully developed <coughs> and u is not a function of x for hydrodynamically fully developed flow so with this concept now let us try to draw this graph of u center line versus x so how will the graph look like let us assume that the flow has become hydrodynamically fully developed here so u center line versus x how will the graph look like or u core versus x how will the graph look like the core velocity increases till the flow becomes fully developed after it has become fully developed it doesn't change any more right what happens with pressure versus x or dpdx versus x whatever so remember that in the core region we can use the bernoulli's equation because the core region doesn't feel the effect of the viscous force right so this is for the core region so if you now differentiate with respect to x dpc dx right so you can see what is this what is duc dx positive or negative positive uc is positive that means dpc dx is negative so it shows that the pressure continuously decreases as the fluid enters the channel remember that this pressure may include gravity so this is here we have not considered the effect of gravity assuming that it is not important or we have put the gravity within the p so the p is p plus rho gz that is called as piezometric pressure okay so this p versus x is the piezometric pressure versus x so it may include the gravity part that is why in the bernoulli's equation separately the potential energy term we have not written because it may be clubbed with the pressure term so pressure versus x <coughs> now after the flow has become fully developed what is the situation duc dx will be zero 
so dp dx will be zero that means p will be so source p will be yes why are you accepting what i am saying this is the see i am saying that when the flow has become fully developed this will be zero and you are accepting it when the flow has become fully developed the viscous effect has penetrated to the center line so the bernoulli's equation is no more valid okay so you cannot use <coughs> this equation you cannot use this equation after the flow has become fully developed this equation is only till the flow has become flow is becoming developed so when the flow has become fully developed what happens <coughs> so let us try to make a talk about the fully developed flow the mathematics of the fully developed flow the exact solution of the navier stokes equation has already been worked out by professor shom i am not getting into the exact solution of the navier stokes equation for fully developed flow but i am trying to give you some physical and qualitative understanding which may be useful for our discussion so let us take a small volume of fluid uh let us say if this is the channel so we have got, we have got convinced that we should not use this equation when the flow has become fully developed because viscous effects now penetrate to the core so you cannot use the bernoulli's equation anymore otherwise it gives something absurd you see if this is zero then dpc dx is zero that means pc is a constant if the pressure is a constant how it will drive a flow right so uh, if you take a fluid element like this so here if the pressure is p let us say the cross sectional area is a what is the pressure here p plus let us say this length is delta x p plus del p del x into delta x into a this is the force due to pressure what are the forces acting on this this is a fully developed flow what are the forces which are acting on this so a fully developed flow means what so if you look into the acceleration of flow if it is a two dimensional flow so u del u del x let us say it's a steady flow so steady flow this term will be zero so this is the acceleration term right rho into this is the mass into acceleration per unit volume in the navier stokes equation so this is zero for steady flow what about del u del x del u del x is equal to zero for fully developed flow when we say fully developed we are meaning here hydrodynamically fully developed when we come to thermal boundary layer you have to be careful in distinguishing between hydrodynamically fully developed flow and thermally fully developed flow they are two different concepts altogether now what about this term so we can e evaluate this term by looking into the continuity equation so this is zero for fully developed flow that means v is not a function of y so 
So, if v is not a function of y, <coughs> what can you say about v? So, if you consider the y direction, consider this figure. What is the value of v at y equal to h? 0 y equal to minus h also it is 0. That means, because v is not a function of y, if you can find out the value of v at a particular value of y, that should be true for all values of y, right. That means, v is 0 for all values of y. So, but if there were holes in the plate, there are technological situations in which you, you, you make holes in the plate, then v is not 0 at the wall. So, Assuming that there is no penetration at the plates or no penetration at the solid boundary, you will have V equal to 0 at wall. So, V is equal to 0 at wall, this means V is equal to 0 for all Y. So, if V is 0, then this term is 0. So, the entire in the Navier-Stokes equation, the left hand side becomes identically 0. So, the non-linearity of the Navier-Stokes equation is gone. So, it becomes a linear equation which is also called as the Stokes equation which you can solve by analytical uh, tools. Now, when the, so physically what is happening? Physically, the flow is not accelerating. So, a fully developed flow physically is not accelerating until and unless there is a penetration at the, at the solid boundary. If there is no penetration at the solid boundary, that means a fully developed flow is not accelerating. So, if the fully developed flow is not accelerating, then what is happening? All forces are balanced, that is why it is not accelerating. So, what are the forces acting on it? One is due to, so if you take an element like this, a control volume like this, one force is due to the pressure, other force is due to the wall shear <coughs> stress. So, these two forces they balance each other, so that there is no net acceleration, that is the physics of a fully developed flow. So, if you have tau wall, as the wall shear stress, so you can write the force as tau wall into perimeter into delta x, right. So, for example, if it is was a circular pipe, what is the shear force? Wall shear stress into 2 pi r into L, right. So, the perimeter is 2 pi r. So, to make it generalized, so that you can apply it for any cross section, we are writing tau wall into perimeter into length perimeter for a circular pipe is 2 pi r that is easy to visualize. So, now these forces are balanced. So, P into A minus P plus So, you can write tau wall right. Now, how do you calculate tau wall for a fully developed flow? For a fully developed flow, you get a velocity profile which is a function of y for a rectangular or a parallel plate channel and it is a function of uh, r for a circular pipe. So, uh, depending on whether it is a parallel plate channel or a circular pipe, you have to calculate mu du dy at the wall or mu du dr at the wall. So, that will give you tau wall. So, question is, is it a constant? or not a constant. So, u is a function of y for a fully developed flow. 
so du dy is a function of y when you put the value of y equal to y at the wall then that becomes a constant right so if the velocity is a function of y only then tau wall is a constant if velocity is a function of y only then tau wall is a constant that means this is also a constant that means for fully developed flow del p del x is a constant that means del p del x becomes dp dx so p versus x is linear so p versus x when the flow is not fully developed is non linear but when the flow is fully developed it is linear so this is linear tau wall versus x the wall shear stress should be constant for a fully developed flow because tau wall is mu du dy at the wall u is a function of y only so du dy at the wall is a constant so fully developed flow it's a constant this is constant this is also constant in the developing region now there are two possibilities one is it increases to this constant value or it decreases from a different value to this constant value so what it will be so tau <coughs> wall scales with mu uc by delta right mu du dy is order of magnitude wise mu into u center line or u core by delta where delta is the local boundary layer thickness this is delta so the interesting thing is uc increases with x right in the developing region that we have seen delta also increases with x right the boundary layer grows so what happens to this ratio right you have a ratio where the numerator increases with x the denominator also increases with x so what happens to this ratio see that you can tell from a very intuitive thing that when the when you start entering the channel what is delta delta is tending to zero but you see is finite so tau wall will be very large as you enter the channel after that del both delta and uc are finite that means it should asymptotically decrease from a very large value to this value as so this is large large tau wall then it comes to a constant see these three graphs i will tell you that it is very important that as students of fluid mechanics you should be able to sketch those qualitatively see you may be a uh, very strong in solving di complex differential equations that's very important but that's not all in learning fluid mechanics so this we totally develop these concepts by looking into the physics of the fully developed flow without getting into the navier stokes equations their exact solution and all this and this kind of physical insight you should try to develop in uh, like understanding the fluid mechanics and heat transfer so when we are interested about the hydrodynamics in parallel we should also look into the issues of heat transfer so we will look into that now just like the hydrodynamic boundary layer growing we will also have the thermal boundary layer growing so important take home message from this part of the analysis is that for the hydrodynamically fully developed flow the 
the velocity profile is not a function of x, it is a function of y only. In the developing flow, the core velocity continuously varies with x, there is nothing called as u infinity. growth of thermal boundary layer. So, let us say that this fluid which was coming with a velocity u infinity was also coming with a temperature of T infinity and the wall temperature is T wall. You may argue that the two walls may not be at the same temperature at the undergraduate level we will not be entering into that complication we will assume that it is symmetric with respect to the thermal problem also and that means the two walls are at same temperature, but the temperature need not be constant it may be a function of x. So, just like the growth of hydrodynamic boundary layer the thermal boundary layer also grows. Now, we have already learned that there is nothing called as u infinity in these types of problems and analogously there is also nothing called as t infinity. T infinity is only outside the channel, once the flow enters the channel the effective velocity of the fluid the core velocity continuously changes uh, sorry the core temperature continuously changes and it is not T infinity. So, question is for internal flows when you write minus k del T del y at the wall this is equal to h. So, we are writing a heat transfer equation say from fluid to the wall. So, we are writing the wall temperature. Uh, so, is different from that of the fluid temperature. So, we are writing the heat flux minus k del T del y at the wall is equal to h into this temperature difference. So, T this is not T infinity what is this that we will discuss what is this. So, here just because the y axis is directed positively or upwards that is why this is this difference otherwise if the y axis was from the plate down then it would have been T wall minus this. So, it is just because of the axis issue. But the more important is what is this T. Now, this T is not T infinity because T infinity is no more the reference temperature in the internal flow just like u infinity is no more the reference velocity for internal flow T infinity is no more the reference temperature for internal flow. So, if T infinity is no more the reference temperature for internal flow then what is the reference temperature? That reference temperature is called as T m which is bulk mean temperature. What is bulk mean temperature? Let us say that you have a fluid in a particular section. 
this section has non uniform temperature now if you mix this entire fluid in the particular section very thoroughly so that the entire fluid comes to a uniform temperature in a particular section with the same thermal energy as that of the previous case then that equivalent uniform temperature is called as the bulk mean temperature so the entire fluid in a particular section mixed to come to a cross sectionally uniform temperature so what is the utility utility of this concept see actually this problem is like a two dimensional problem if it is a parallel plate the third dimension is not important by introducing this bulk mean temperature we are converting it into a cross sectionally average problem or a one dimensional problem because if we are using a bulk mean temperature that means we are no more interested with the variation in the y direction we are using a temperature which is already cross sectionally averaged out so that will now depend only on x so uh, what is the definition of this now what is the thermal energy of the fluid think of the first law of thermodynamics if you have a flowing system if you have a fluid that is flowing what is the thermal energy of it in the first law of energy balance equation what is the thermal energy component that you write m dot into h mass flow rate into specific enthalpy right so for a incompressible fluid that we are discussing here the h we can write as cp into t so now what is m so but the t is not uniform over the entire cross section so what you do is that at a location y you take a small area da so what is the mass flow rate through this da rho u da this is m dot into cp into t this integrated is the total thermal energy so that divided by m dot cp will give you some t average this is integral of m dot cp t this is integral of m dot cp so this will give you some sort of cross sectionally average t so cross sectionally average t is not integral of tda by integral of da it is weighted with the velocity because when the when you are mi calling it as a bulk mean temperature it is also called as mixing cup temperature the factor that is creating the mixing is the fluid flow so it has to be weighted by the velocity so when you write the thermal energy of a flowing system it is not independent of velocity that is where convection is related to fluid mechanics so when you write m dot into h in that m dot the velocity is there so you cannot write the average temperature without referring to the velocity so this is called as a bulk mean temperature but if you have a rho constant for this particular problem so and cp also not changing so if rho cp are constants then <coughs> tm is equal to integral of utda by integral of uda
so now so we can understand this tm is a function of what x or y it is a function of x because it is already integrated over y so this is a function of x p wall is a function of x p is a function of both x and y t is a function of both x and y but tm is a function of x t wall is a function of x so h can be a function of whatever so del t del y at wall when you calculate so this t is a function of x y so del t del y at the wall is a function of what x so this is a function of x this is a function of x that means h in general is a function of x right now let us try to write an order of magnitude expression for this so let us say that delta t at a given x is the thermal boundary layer thickness so we can write k into delta t by k is of the order of 1 right it is of the order of 1 but it is not a constant when it will become a constant when delta t doesn't change any more that means when the two thermal boundary layers have merged when the two thermal boundary layers are merged and delta t is half height of the channel right or for a circular pipe it is the radius of the pipe so when the thermal boundary layers have merged or met this is the half height of the channel h so then you have h h by k this is a constant see why it is so because h by k is of the order of 1 by delta t and when the delta t becomes a constant h by k becomes a constant and h by k becomes a constant means h by k into a constant length is also a constant this is a non dimensional way of representing h by k so it is basically this h by k that is a matter of interest but non dimensionally when expressed this is actually what this is the nusel number so the nusel number becomes constant for a thermally fully developed flow thermally fully developed flow means the two thermal boundary layers have merged so this is called as thermally fully developed flow so nusel number based on h is constant equivalently h by k is constant for thermally fully developed flow
now we will try to manipulate with this equation minus k del t del y at y is equal to h is equal to h into t m minus t wall. So, in place of this we can write minus k del del y of t minus t wall see this is a y derivative because this is a y derivative any function of x is like a constant with respect to it. So, we have taken this within the derivative these are all functions of x and t wall is also a function of x. So, we can write that h by k is equal to minus k del theta del y uh, sorry minus del theta del y at y is equal to h where theta is t minus t wall by t m minus t wall. So, when h by k is not a function of x, then theta is also not a function of x, right? Because this may be function of y, because at y equal to h, you will get a value which is not dependent on y in any way, but it is a function of x in general. But for thermally fully developed flow this is not a function of x therefore, this also should not be a function of x. If del theta del y is not a function of x that means theta is also not a function of x. So, they in general to generalize it we do not we should not think of special functions, but generalizing that we can say that if del theta del y is not a function of x then in general theta should also not be a function of x. So, theta is not a function of x this is another hallmark of thermally fully developed flow. So, this is one point Nusselt number is constant the second point is theta is equal to t which is a function of x y minus t wall which is a function of x by t m minus t wall this is not equal to a function of x for thermally fully developed flow. Now, you can clearly see that this does not mean that t is not a function of x. <coughs> so, the reason is quite clear let us say that you have a flat you have two parallel plates like this you have thermal boundary layers growing and now you go on say heating the plate this is heat flux. So, if you go on heating the plate how can it happen that the temperature has become a constant. So, even if the thermal boundary layers are merged temperature can still vary with x. So, this is a very important difference between hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow. For hydrodynamically fully developed flow u is not a function of x, but for thermally fully developed flow t still remains a function of x, but the this definition of non dimensional temperature theta that is not a function of x. So, it is not a very intuitive thing because all these are this has function of x y this is function of x this is function of x this is also a function of x, but this ratio is no more a function of x for thermally fully developed flow and why we have just proved it. 
Now, uh, we will uh, have some observations with regard to two different boundary conditions which we will discuss in this course. One is a constant wall temperature, another is a constant wall heat flux. So, constant T wall, what is the consequence? So, this is case 1. constant T wall, so you have T minus T wall is equal to theta into T m minus T wall, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So, this becomes del T del x, right. What is the derivative with respect to x? 0, because T wall is constant is equal to d theta d x so this d theta d x is 0 for thermally fully developed flow So, you can write del T del x is equal to theta into d T m d x. We will when we will solve the energy equation you will see that in the energy equation you have a term u del T del x. So, in that del T del x we will substitute theta into d T m d x. Then the next important case which we will discuss in length for over this course is the constant wall heat flux boundary condition. So, here you can write T again T minus T wall is equal to theta into T m minus T wall. So, del T del x minus d T wall d x now T wall it may be a function of x. If always remember that on a surface you cannot control the temperature and heat flux simultaneously. So, if you are controlling the heat flux temperature will vary in its own way, it will be some function of x not that you can maintain it both isothermal and constant flux that is not physically possible. So, you have del T del x minus d T wall d x is equal to Now, what is the wall heat flux? Let us say this is equation number 1. What is the wall heat flux? This is equal to H into. So, if you are directing the heat flux in this direction at the top wall, then it is H into T wall minus T m, right. So, constant wall heat flux. So, if you differentiate with respect to x, 0 is equal to d h d x into T wall minus T m plus h into d T wall d x minus d T m d x, right. Now, for thermally fully developed flow, one important thing, so these are very subtle concepts. For thermally fully developed flow, can we tell H is a constant? We can tell H is a constant provided K is also a constant, because the very basic premise of the thermally fully developed flow is H by K is a constant. But often when H is a constant, we say the flow is thermally fully developed and that is grossly valid provided K is a constant. 
So, if we assume that k is a constant, then this is 0 for thermally fully developed flow if k is constant. Right? So, if this is 0, then that means you have dt wall dx is equal to dt m dx, this is equation number 2. Now, you substitute equation number 2 in equation number 1. So, d t wall d x equal to d t m d x means this term will be 0 and this term is 0 for thermally fully developed flow because theta is not a function of x right and this term becomes 0 from equation number 2, 0 from equation 2. So, what is left? The left hand side is 0 that means del t del x is equal to dt wall dx. This is equation 3. If you combine equation 2 and 3, you will get del t del x equal to dt m dx is equal to dt wall dx, right. This is plain and simple comparing a com combination of 2 and 3. Can we tell anything more about this? Just these 3 are equal? Can we go beyond that and tell something? These are not merely equal, but this shows that each is a constant. Why? This is a function of x and y, and this is a, these are functions of x. In general, if you have a general function of x and y is equal to a general function of x, general function, you have to keep that in mind, not specific functions. So, this could be any arbitrary function of x, y. A general function of x and y is a general function of x. This equality is possible only if each is a constant. Okay. Otherwise, that equality may be valid only for special cases, but not for general functions. So, that means not only these three are equal but each is equal to a constant. So, to summarize our discussion today, the for the constant wall temperature, you can write del t del x is equal to theta into d t m d x for thermally fully developed flow with constant wall temperature, with constant wall heat flux, this is the condition. So, we have got expressions for del t del x in terms of the bulk mean temperature gradient. So, that essentially has made one thing possible. Mathematically, what it has given us? That it has given us an equivalent one dimensional formulation of the problem. Instead of del t del x now, we can use d t m d x or d t wall d x, those are one dimensional parameters. And similarly, for constant wall temperature. So, we will take it up from here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.